Hello and welcome to this lecture on organizational culture. If we think of culture as a shared set of norms, values, and traditions, we can get some insight into the collective characteristics of an organization. Organizational culture borrows from research on international cultural differences, as well as anthropomorphisms regarding personality. Technically, firms don't have personalities, but sometimes the shared characteristics that makes firms different can be thought of as a sort of macro personality. So the study of organizational culture is a decidedly macro level topic. Let's get started. Some researchers use a categorical typology to differentiate one organizational culture from another. With that method, a culture is in one or maybe two categories, but not the others. Other researchers use a dimensional typology to differentiate organizational cultures based upon differences on those all of those dimensions. The dimensional typology allows for more fine-grained differentiation than the either-or categorization scheme favored by some. Let's make sure we understand what these categories or dimensions are. An innovative culture is flexible, adaptive, and willing to experiment with new ideas, employees, and or products. An example is Gore-Tex. An aggressive culture is highly competitive and keen on outperforming its competitors, sometimes at any cost. An example is Microsoft. An outcome-oriented culture focuses on actions, achievements, and results. An example is Best Buy. A stable culture is predictable, rule-based, and heavily bureaucratic. An example is the U.S. Army. A people-oriented culture is supportive, has respect for individual rights, and above all, is fair to all. An example is Starbucks. A team-oriented culture is collaborative and focuses on cooperation between employees. An example is Southwest Airline. A detailed-oriented culture pays attention to the little things and emphasizes precision. An example is the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. On the other hand, some company cultures are a mixture of cultural characteristics. Some might be a little bit innovative, a little bit people-oriented, and a little bit detail-oriented. No culture fits perfectly cleanly inside one characteristic box. I'm sure the U.S. Army considers itself team-oriented. Others might consider the Army to be an aggressive culture. There is not perfectly true and correct ways to characterize a culture. Let's move on. You're about to see a table that cross-classifies corporate cultural dimensions with societal cultural dimensions. On this slide, you will notice that I have collapsed individualism and collectivism into one dimension. There truly is not yet enough empirical evidence to separate them, and most researchers consider them to be opposite endpoints of the same unidimensional spectrum. Let's look at the corporate cultural characteristics one by one. An innovative culture usually has a low power distance and low uncertainty avoidance. Because they are innovative, they are likely to be egalitarian, and it does not matter if the great new idea came from an engineer or a janitor. Taking risks is part of the mindset of the company, so they seek out uncertainty, not avoid it. An aggressive culture likely has a high power distance and high achievement orientation, not a nurturing orientation. They operate from the top down in a strict hierarchy and have little time for nurturing. It's either produce or get fired for them. An outcome-oriented culture likely has an achievement orientation and a short-term focus. They want results at all costs, and they want them now. A stable culture likely has a high power distance and a collectivistic culture. They have a hierarchy that they preserve at all costs, and as long as the members of the culture abide by it, then they will take care of everyone in the company. A people-oriented culture likely has a nurturing and collective orientation. They believe in developing members from the first day through their retirement. 
They put the good of the group above the good of any one employee, and they take pride in that. A team-oriented culture likely has a low power distance and a collectivistic orientation. For them, the welfare of all is more important than any one member. They value the input of everyone and consult with many employees before they make an important decision. A detailed-oriented culture likely has a high level of uncertainty avoidance and a long-term orientation. They make sure every detail is correct so that unexpected events do not disrupt their operations, products, or services. They focus on the little things so they will last a long time as a company. Cutting corners for a quick buck is counter to what they believe in strongly. Let's move on. Here's a table that cross-classifies corporate cultural dimensions with the big five personality dimensions. As mentioned in the introduction, sometimes we can think of corporate cultures as reflective of collective personalities. The younger the firm is, the closer it is to the personality of the founder. As time goes by, a firm tends to adopt personality traits that suit its mission or strategy. If the strategy is to be a low-cost provider, then it is likely to be high on openness and extroversion as it seeks new opportunities around every corner. If the strategy is one of differentiation, then it is likely to be high on conscientiousness and low on openness as it is driven to perfection and less focused on external forces. Of course, these are probably the ultimate anthropomorphism that gives human-like qualities to non-human entities. Let's look at the corporate cultural dimensions cross-listed with the big five traits. An innovative culture is usually high on neuroticism and openness as it seeks out the latest, greatest new product and doesn't mind if some products fail or even give the firm a bad name. They want success at any cost. An aggressive culture is likely to be low on agreeableness and high on neuroticism as they seek to destroy all competitors and are willing to engage in nefarious activities to win at all costs. An outcome-oriented culture is likely to be high on conscientiousness and extroversion. They focus on the end game, which requires careful planning and exploit their relationships with suppliers to do well. A stable culture is likely high on conscientiousness and low on openness. They are driven and diligent with a focus on success and are willing to risk missing out on the next great thing because it makes them uncomfortable to be risky. A people-oriented culture is likely to be high on agreeableness and extroversion. They truly value human relationships and will go out of their way to develop and foster new ones, sometimes even at the risk of some profit. A team-oriented culture is likely to be high on agreeableness and extroversion, similar to the people-oriented culture. Teams are comprised of people. A team-oriented culture depends upon an influx of new teammates and it gets them by personal outreach. A detail-oriented culture is likely to be high on conscientiousness and low on openness. They are so focused on the fine points of the product or service that they sometimes miss golden opportunities in other areas. For them, getting it right, really right, is the goal of everything they stand for. Let's move on. Here's a table that cross-lists cultural characteristics with the two main types of organizations, according to Burns and Stalker. It is true that organizations can be characterized by many types of Burns and Stalker variations, but this gives us a simple pair of categories. A firm is mechanical. Start over. Testing. One, two, three. Here is a table that cross-lists cultural characteristics with the two main types of organizations according to Burns and Stalker. It is true that organizations can be characterized of many types, but Burns and Stalker give us a simple pair of categories. According to them, a firm is mechanical if decision-making is centralized, the form or structure is tall, and the span of control is small. Organic firms are the opposite on these three factors. It's a simple typology, but it has a great deal of intuitive appeal. 
An innovative firm is likely to be an organic structure as it strives to respond quickly to market forces. An aggressive firm is likely to have a mechanical structure as a hierarchy is important to its mission. An outcome-oriented firm is likely organic as it doesn't matter to the firm where the great ideas come from as long as they help the firm prosper. A stable firm is likely to be mechanical as it has found the best way of doing things in its industry and being quick to change is not important to it. A people-oriented firm is probably organic as it focuses on its organizational members, not on positions and titles. A team-oriented firm is also probably organic as many times the good of the team comes first and stayed or tired reporting relationships are antithetical to its mission. A detail-oriented firm is likely to be mechanical because innovation and responding to fickle markets is not important to it. It makes or serves only a few things and it does them exceptionally well. Change is not in its vocabulary. Let's move on. Here are some tips for business practitioners. The focus here is on employees who will always be more numerous than business owners or managers. A current or future employee would be wise to follow these tips. First, you should recognize that characteristics like innovation, stability, detail orientation, etc. are by no means an exhaustive list of cultural characteristics. There are others, but these provide a simple intuitive way to evaluate the most important parts of a company culture. This typology makes it simple to understand company culture. Second, be aware that if you think you're going to come into a new company and change its culture, then you are probably delusional. Changing a culture is extremely hard from the bottom. It's still quite difficult to do from the top, but as an employee, presumably at the bottom, your focus should be on fitting in as best as possible and doing nothing to upset the culture. Third, try and match your style to that of the company. By style, I mean values, beliefs, norms, and personality. There are plenty of companies out there who are hiring and information from insiders is abundant. Find that info. And if a company values something antithetical to what you believe in, then don't go work there. You will be miserable and everyone will know that you are indeed a misfit. Fourth, the best way to find out about a company's culture is to ask an insider. If you ask when you are being interviewed, it has two purposes. First, you will get a picture from someone in the know, so to speak, but it might be a bit of a rosy picture. Second, it will show that culture matters to you. Culture matters to everyone everywhere. It is the shared set of norms, values, and traditions that bind us together. Without culture, we really don't have much in common with each other. And your inquiry of the interviewer will demonstrate that you value culture just like they do. Let's move on. Well, thank you. That's all, folks.